Hi, I'm Kay Hayes reporting live from USCHA 2024 with HIV.gov. And I'm excited. We just ended a federal panel where we talked about the syndemic approach and the work that we do. Critical. I'm talking about a packed room, standing room only. And I'm delighted to be here with Heather Haupt at HRSA Hab. And I really have a few questions for Heather. She was there in the space. And I want to ask her her perspective on what she heard there and then also talk about HRSA. So in this packed room, welcome, Heather. Thank you. And I want to talk about, you know, this syndemic approach and the work that we do, sort of the key messages that you heard in that room, and then also specifically from a HRSA perspective, mm -hmm. would you like to share? Great. Thank you so much, Kay. And thank you so much for inviting me to, uh, to talk with you today. I have to agree. It was an incredibly energetic and uh, lively conversation for about three hours That's right. this morning, um, talking specifically about syndemics and the work that we all do across our federal agencies uh, around a syndemic approach. And really what that means is focusing on the person in front of you as a whole person, not specific to their HIV disease or not specific to uh, a specific uh, uh, disease state, um, but really about what what is it that they need from a social determinants of health perspective, a syndemics perspective? And I think each of the agencies brought their unique lens uh, to that work and the importance of that work that we do. So, for example, in the Ryan White program, we've always had a syndemic approach because we're a comprehensive system of care uh, for medications, health care and support mm -hmm. services. And so we've always looked at the person in front of us in terms of what do you need? Right. Um, and provided that through our support services and our healthcare services and our medication. Uh, and I, you know, I heard from CDC really focusing on policy and persons. I heard from NIH uh, about the research they've been doing and really the comprehensive across all of the centers mm -hmm. approach that they are focusing on in their syndemic work. Uh, the presentation from uh, Indian Health Service was spectacular in terms of uh, the work they've been able to do through the minority AIDS uh, uh, resources, as well as some of the innovation they've been doing around street medicine and Navajo right. Nation. Um, and then of course, our SAMHSA colleagues talking about uh, the two new pilot projects um, that they have, which I think are incredibly exciting in terms of expanding their work to certain populations, as well as different ways of doing mm -hmm. things. And then I think uh, hearing from our CMS colleagues was also very, very important. Um, as, as Michelle mentioned, um, they don't do service delivery, they're a payer and a regulator, but they're really stepping into that policy space and That's that right. payer regulator space um, in unique ways that I think expand the opportunities for people with HIV and people at risk of HIV um, in the country. So I think it was a depth and breadth of a discussion. Um, and I think there's a lot in terms of all of our federal agencies taking back and figuring out again, where those opportunities are and what we can be doing in order to further the syndemic approach. Right. And I think what we heard today that was so critical and really critical for me is what all of us, our federal partners, mm -hmm. all of the agencies there that presented, and most particularly looking at who was in the room. Mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning of it, we asked a few people, please share where you're from. So we had a real collection of our colleagues from across the country. Mm -hmm. And we heard best practices. We heard the challenges. Uh, we heard some solutions that Absolutely. have worked. We talked about the importance of incentives that was shared by our colleague at the Indian Health Service. So we heard a lot. Um, and I think as we turn the corner and talk about what's next, mm -hmm. like what is it that we can each take back home and do or think about to do differently? I'd love to hear your perspective mm -hmm. on some of that. Great question. Thank you. I, I think um, one of the things I shared in the session was really our uh, Ryan White Program uh, 2030 vision, which is really um, to laud the success of the Ryan White Program to date, where we have over 566,000 people in the program, which are over half of all people with diagnosed uh, HIV in the country. And of, of those folks, um, if they're in medical care, 90% of them have reached uh, viral suppression. So we know that mm -hmm the program works. We know that our Ending the HIV Epidemic Initiative works from the success of that. Over 22,000 people in 2022 newly engaged in care is spectacular. That's right. So we know that there's a foundation. I think all the federal agencies know that there's a foundation. And what we really have to do next, and this is the Ryan White Program 2030 vision, is reach the estimated 220,000 people who are out of care. Because those are the folks who are not reaching viral suppression for their own health reasons and also 
if they don't know they have HIV, are transmitting HIV. That's right. And so we've got to bring those 222,000 individuals into care so that they can reach viral suppression, not transmit. And that is the way we will end the epidemic. And we can't do that without new partnerships, That's both right. at the federal level and at the jurisdictional level and at the clinic level. We can't do that unless we are engaging with our communities mm -hmm. to find out what's working and what's not working. And we can't do that unless we are really focusing interventions that we know are going to work with the populations that we need to be reaching. And so all of that conversation, I think, in the room this morning gave all of our federal agencies some homework um, to right. go home to, again, laser focus on the 220,000, uh, but think creatively about what do we each bring to the table and what do our grantee recipients bring to the table that we can leverage to do this work going forward. That's right. And I think it's so important and it was evident by our session earlier. We talked three hours and we got questions and answers and opportunities. And I wanna thank HIV.gov for having this live opportunity for us to continue to share our message. So as we kind of wrap this up, I always ask this question because it's so important to me. What is the one thing, Heather, that you want to share with our listeners, a takeaway message, mm -hmm. sort of marching orders as we go forward mm -hmm. from your perspective? I'd love to hear that. Uh, that there's um, absolute wisdom um, in our community, and we cannot get this work done unless we collaborate at all levels of our systems, from local, federal, jurisdictional, individual. And so really reaching out across uh, and forming those partnerships and collaborating is the key to the work that we need to get done. I'd like to echo that. <laughs> I'd like to echo that and say it is really about listening. We did that today. We asked questions. You guys did a phenomenal job presenting as our federal partners. We did a lot of listening, a lot of asking questions. Our community partners did a lot of listening and a lot of asking questions. And that is what it's all about. So thank you for tuning in live. HIV.gov for more information. Have a good day.